All right. So um, we have uh, we asked a few questions here with uh, with four. Okay. And then um, and implicitly we said, um, you know, what's the probability of an and situation? We have, uh, you know, the probability. Uh, if I ask, what's the probability that you select someone at random and this person? is a woman between 25 and 39. So if I, what, what's the probability mm -hmm. that a ra I randomly select one person and it's, what's the probability that the person is a woman and between the ages of 25 to 39? you're looking for 25 or 39 and you subtract 18 uh, so I'm, I'm doing uh, 28 over 93 minus 93 uh, 18 over 93 okay I'm, I'm, I'm just using probability of a or B is equal to the probability of a plus the probability of B oh, okay. minus probability of a Because when I do all the women, that's 53 represents this whole row, and 28 represents this entire column. But I've double counted this group. Oh, okay. Because 28 already has 18. Yes, okay. 28 has 18 into it. And 53 also has 18 yeah. as part of it. So we're <coughs> double counting it. We want to get rid of it once. Okay. Let's, uh, let's try something. All right, let's say the probability that someone um, has, uh, um, I don't know. Okay, probability that someone has a dog, let's say is um, 35%. Let's say probability that someone has a cat is uh, 40%. And let's say the probability that someone has a cat and a dog uh, is 10%. Uh, 
possibility that someone has a cat or a dog. <coughs> exclusive events. All right? The only time I can add things together is if they're mutually exclusive, meaning nobody is allowed to own a cat and a dog at the same time. Okay? So, uh, yeah, mutually exclusive events, sure, you can add those two together, but these are not mutually exclusive. Okay. What's the probability that someone has a cat and no dog? talk about uh, something else here. All right. Let's say I ask you, what is the color of your eyes? 
Some people say, oh, I've got brown eyes. Someone says green. Blue. And then, uh, and then you know, um, gray or uh, just other color, um, other color eyes, okay? Gray slash other. So I just ask you, you know, what color are your eyes, okay? And then I ask you, uh, you know, what color is your hair? And some say uh, blonde hair. Some say brown hair. Black hair. And then we will also have uh, red or other colored hair, okay? This is a lot of people, okay. All right, so let me just uh, make up some numbers here. Then I ask, what's the probability Okay, so in this case we get it we have a bunch of numbers to add. So our answer here Okay. Seventy divided by two fifteen, which is like thirty thirty percent thirty one percent or something. Thirty two point six. Point three two six. Okay. What if I ask, what's the probability that someone has um, blue eyes? Okay, I just made up some numbers here, so I don't even know if these are representative. Okay, so. All right. What if I said, I know that somebody has blonde hair. What's the probability that this person has blue eyes? And now I'm saying, so I've, I've, I'm saying, all right, I picked someone at random. I'm gonna tell you something about this person. This person, has blonde hair. Now that you know that this person has blonde hair, what's the probability that this person has blue eyes? 30 out of 70, okay? So I say, I pick someone. This person has blonde hair. What is the probability? This person has uh, blue eyes. Okay. Well, to write
write this symbolically, okay? Just like we have probability blonde, probability blue eyes, right? When I write probability blue eyes, what I'm saying is, I pick someone at random, what's the probability that this person has blue eyes? That's what this says, right? So in order to say the same thing here, I pick someone at random and this person has blonde hair, what's the probability that this person has blue eyes? To write that, I'm gonna write probability, what is the probability that someone has blue eyes, okay, given, or if we know, the person has blonde hair. Okay, so we have a vertical bar, and this is red, what's the probability of blue eyes given blonde hair? Singling out the blonde people? The, the what? Yeah, the blonde. Alright, so what I'm saying, okay, what's the, you know, if I told you I just, I picked someone at random, and I said, what's the probability that this person has blue eyes? Well, your answer is what? of information, your answer changes. I'm telling you, all right, hang on. <coughs> Look, uh, this person also has blonde hair. Okay, this person has blonde hair. What's the probability that this person now has, has blue eyes? Okay, now that you know this piece of information, the probability that this person has blue eyes changes to basically 43%. So you're jumping from 21% to 43%. This is known as a conditional probability. Okay. And, uh, and from the table, it's relatively easy to see. We're saying we're limiting ourselves to just the people in the row that says blonde hair. Okay. We're just limiting ourselves to that. Okay, so once I tell you that the person I've selected has blonde hair, now you know that it can only be one of the 70 people. Okay? And once you know that it's only one out of the 70 people, you know 30 of those people have blonde hair. And so your answer is going to be 30 out of 70. Is that, is that okay? All right, what if I said, what's the probability, okay, or here, let me let me ask you this question. What does this ask? Okay, okay. So what's um, but okay, so in English, what does this say? Your answer is correct, by the way. So if we know somebody has blue eyes, so this time I pick someone else, and I'm telling you, oh, this person has blue eyes. What's the probability that this person has blonde hair? Your answer is going to be 30 out of 45. Now we are limiting ourselves just to those people who have blue eyes. Out of the people who have blue eyes, of which there are 45, 30 have blonde hair. So our answer is like 67%. So it's very important that you can distinguish between blue hair given blonde, or blue, 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 blue eyes given blonde hair and blonde hair given blue eyes, okay? They look similar, they sound similar, but they're very different. The conditional probability is basically the given. 
given. Conditional means a, a piece of information to you is given. A piece of information is given to you. And based on that condition or that piece of information you know, what's the probability of something else? Okay. All right. So from the table, it seems pretty easy to just look at the table and answer some kind of question, right? Uh, sometimes we're not given a table, and we have to be able to answer something like this. Okay? What's the probability of one event, A, if we know or given that event B has happened? In this case, this is the probability of A and B divided by the probability of B. And, uh, and I think you guys kind of did this already in your head without making them probabilities. Okay. So for example, let me just do, do that here. So probability of blonde hair given blue eyes, just using um, this notation is going to be probability is how many people have blonde hair and blue eyes Or basically, what's the probability that someone has blonde hair and blue eyes divided by the probability that someone has blue eyes? Okay? All right, what's the probability that someone has blonde hair and blue eyes? A probability. Not how many, but what's the probability? So, what's the probability that someone has blonde hair and blue eyes? The probability. Okay? It's not 30. Huh? 30 divided by 215. Right? What's the pro if I pick someone at random, what's the probability that this person has blonde hair and blue eyes? 30 divided by 215. Is, is that clear? Okay. So then what's the probability that someone has blue eyes? Forty-five over two fifteen. Forty-five out of two fifteen. Okay, and when we, um, okay, and so if we remember our fractions and things like that, we see that the two fifteens cancel each other out, and we get thirty divided by forty-five. Point six seven. Isn't that it looks like we're doing the same thing. I mean, the answer is going to be the same, okay, because we're answering the same question. But here, um, this we could answer directly from the table. We just see, oh, you know what, in that column there's 45 people, and in, the, in that column of 45 people, 30 of them have blue, uh, blonde hair, okay? But sometimes we're not given a table. Sometimes we're not given a table, and it's kind of like this cats and dogs thing, okay? And then uh, you might still be asked this type of question. Okay, so let's see if we can answer this question with our cats and dogs scenario. Okay, so what did I say? Probability of a dog, I said is 0.35, and probability of a cat is 0 0.40, and probability of cat and dog, dog was 10. Okay, 10%. Okay, not 10, 10%. Okay, because probability can never be bigger than one. So you can say 10% or point. One zero B. Never say ten. Okay. So then, what is the probability of cat given dog? Okay. And then, what is probability of dog given cat? And how are these things different? What's one asking?
So think about what these things mean. So maybe maybe we'll talk. Uh, is there if I raise this step over here? Okay. So maybe we'll talk about what it means in English and then try to find the actual number. All right, what is this saying? They have a dog. If they have a dog, okay. So this is, what is the piece of information that we know about this person? We know that they have a dog. We know that they have a dog. And what am I asking? What's the probability that they also have a cat? Okay, so we know they have a dog. What's the probability that they also have a cat? So this is probability of cat given dog. Okay, or uh, which is equal to, we know they have, a, they have a dog. What is probability they also have cat? Okay, so what's our answer here? Just switch the words dog and cat, right? Cat and dog. So, what is the probability of dog given cat? Now we know what's the piece of information we know? We know this person has a cat. What's the probability that they also have a dog? Okay, so this is going to be probability of cat and dog. So, dog and cat, probability of dog and cat is the same as probability of having a cat and a dog, okay? Because the labels are arbitrary. And we could just, the order of the labels are, don't, don't matter. So this is probability of, divided by probability of a cat. So 0.10 divided by 0.10 divided by 0 0.40. you guys still have your table in your book, or in your notes. Alright. Well, let's take a look at this thing. The probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A and B divided by the probability of B. Okay. What if I multiply both sides by the probability of B? What am I going to get? Okay. So this might not seem like much. Or it might seem like too much. Um, <laughs> But what this result is, okay, all I did was multiply both sides by probability of B. Okay, so it's just simple algebra. What this says is that the probability of events A and B happening, okay, so the probability that two things happen is the probability of one event happening, so event B happening, times the probability that event A is going to happen given that B, event B has happened. Is that okay? So what's the probability that um, uh, I don't know. What's 
the probability that uh, the Lakers win the, uh, um, I don't know, the, uh, the fir uh, you know, first round playoffs and uh, win the championship of the, uh, of the season? Okay. okay. So, so, so the probability that they're going to win the championship, okay, probability that they, they win this division, or not the division, the, uh, the uh, conference semifinals and the championship is, first, it's the probability that they have to win the conference semifinals times, once that happens, what's the probability that they win the championship given that that has happened, okay? So it's kind of, it illustrates kind of like the, the sequence of events there. Um, and probably this season, very, very small, okay? Um, or, you know, what's the probability um, that the Clippers win game four, uh, games three and four, okay? Well, it's going to be the probability that they win game three times the probability that they win game four if we know that they won game three, okay? So, and, and uh, you know, there's a, there's a decent chance, okay? Non-zero chance there, okay. Uh, so that, that's what we've got going on. And, uh, and this can be used to answer questions like, okay, so let's say, um, Uh, I hid that piece of information from you, but I told you, uh, gave you everything else. I told you the probability of a dog, of someone owning a dog is 35%, and the probability of cat given dog is 0.286, and the probability of dog given cat is 0.25. Yes? So basically it's just like 1% of dog owners also own cats. That's exactly what this says. That's exactly what this says, okay? Because this says 35% of the world own dogs, or 35% whatever America, okay, not the world. The rest of the world actually hates dogs. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like America, we love them, and Europe is like some, but the non non-Western world, they kind of... Yeah, I sense extreme they, they sarcasm there. Or, uh, they're, they're like, they're like, uh, possums or something. They just kind of scavenge around. Uh, disgusting, right? Okay. Anyway, so 35% of Americans own dogs. Okay. And this one basically says, of the dog owners, how many also own cats? That's what this says. Who? What's the probability of owning a cat if, if they own a dog? So how many people own cats and dogs? Well, it's if 35% of people own dogs, and of that 35%, 28.6% also own cats, then the probability of owning a cat and a dog is 0.35 times 0.286. And that's because of our rounding issues. It's not going to be exactly 10%, but it's 10%. Okay. And that's, that's, that's what we've got. Okay. So what, what's your name? Yeah, the one who's been, yeah. Jonathan? Okay, so Jonathan understands that this is the percentage of dog owners that also own cats, okay? So this does not play into it, right? And so don't get these things mixed up, okay? Because they look similar, the numbers might even be similar, but they're different, different concepts. Okay, um, all right, so let's talk about the idea of independence. Independence. What does it mean to be independent? So yeah, on your own, right? America had a declaration of independence that says, we want to be on our own. Go away, Britain. Okay? I'm going to fight you. Uh, things like that, okay? Uh, yeah, independence or, uh, you know, an adolescent will say, I just want to be independent. I hate my parents, okay? Um, they just want to be on their own, okay? So independence, uh, in when it comes to um, probability of events, 
Uh, events are independent. Okay. If the outcome of one event has no influence on the outcome of the other event. If event A has no influence on event B, do, will event B have any influence on event A? Yes, no, maybe. Good. Uh, from a statistics point of view, and actually if you think about it, hard, is that if event ha A has no influence on event B, event B will have no influence on event A. <laughs> oh yeah, you know sometimes, sometimes the doors are open. And, um, yeah, right. You got him. Or her. If you name it, it won't work. And name it. trying to make a living. And then trying to tame it. Just trying to survive one more day. Uh, okay. okay, this is being recorded. <laughs> all, right. all right, all right, okay, okay. I'm sorry about the bugs and the uh, exoskeletons. Um, they won't, uh, I think you'll be okay. You are much larger than them. Um, okay, so independence. Events are independent if the outcome of one event has no influence on the other. And so if event A has no influence on event B, then event B can't have any influence on event A, okay? Um, so what's, uh, what's an example of independent events? Oh, okay, Jonathan. Um, like a coin flip, two coin flips? Two coin flips, yeah. So if I flip a coin once and I get heads or tails, it will have no influence on the next coin flip, okay? You go to Vegas and you play uh, any game, all right? Roulette. Well, with the exception of blackjack, okay? You play roulette, what happens during one round has no influence on what's gonna happen in the future, okay? But people have a hard time understanding independence and they think like, oh man, it's the table has, it's gone red a whole bunch of times, yeah. black is for sure gonna come up, and, and then they're like, oh, I'm gonna bet black, and, uh, and it's not any more likely, okay? The probability of black coming up has the probability of any future roulette table roll is not influenced by any of the previous rolls. Okay, so that's uh, so events are independent. Coin flips, they're independent. Okay, um, and if they're independent, okay, so let's think about this. So if events A and B are independent, okay, what is the probability of event A? If we know pro uh, event B has happened, okay. So I'm telling you, uh, events A and B are independent. Oh, has no, has nothing to do. Okay. All right. So events A and B are independent. of event A if we know event B has happened? Not enough information. Not enough information? Okay. 100. You just say if one event happens, it doesn't matter what the future of the next. Right, so right. So zero percent. It's not zero. So oh, all right, it's one zero. If you know event B is zero. I think we're just making up stuff now. <laughs> it's a probability of event A. It's a probability of event A happening all by itself um, oh. That's it, okay? So the probability of event A happening, even if we know uh, event B has happened, is just 
the probability of the event A happening? Is that, is that all right? Okay. What's the probability of B <coughs> given A? Obviously, we need to know they're independent. Yeah, you, you got to know <coughs> this only holds true if they're independent. Okay? Only holds true if they're independent. Okay. So, all right. Look back into your notes and look up what probability of A and B is equal to. This was equal to the probability of what? B times the probability of. A given B. Maybe I had the order different, but multiplication, the order doesn't matter, right? Okay. If we know that they're independent, what's the probability of A and B? So this always holds true. Okay? And here. happens only when they're independent. Okay. If A and B are independent, what is the probability of A given B complement? So, not B. Okay. So now I'm telling you, what does this say? This says, what's the probability of A given what? B did not happen. So what's the probability of A if B did not happen? Probability of A. Good. All right. So that's what it means to be independent. Events that are independent, coin flips, things like that. Okay. There are other things that are independent. Okay. Are is owning a cat and owning a dog are they independent? Yes. Is owning a cat independent of owning a dog? Yes. Yes, because you don't own a cat if you have a dog. Okay. But you don't need to pay food. Yeah. No. Well, is owning a cat independent of owning a dog? No, because no, they're not. How do we check this? No. How do we check? Okay, what does it mean if they're independent? They have to do with one another. Okay, events are independent if the outcome of one event has no influence on the other. Yeah. And I gave you a whole host of equations up here that mm -hmm. are true if they're independent. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's just look at one of them. Probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A. So if, if they're independent, then this thing is going to be true, right? Yeah. All right. Is that true when it comes to cats and dogs? No. No. Okay, so what is what would I write to check this? I would write probability of... Okay, sure. Cat given dog, okay? It doesn't matter. We could have said dog given cat. And if they were independent, this should equal what? Probability of cat, okay? If they're independent, <coughs> this would hold true. What is probability of cat given dog? What is the probability of owning a cat if someone owns a dog? Uh, 0.286. We have it right here. What's the probability of owning a cat if someone owns a dog? 0.286. What's the probability that someone owns a cat, period? 0.40. Because this number does not equal this number, they are not independent. 
If they were independent, these two numbers would be the same. But they're not independent. Is that, is that okay? Yeah. Can I repeat that again? Okay. So do we understand where I got 0.286? Yeah. So that, that was earlier in our notes. We said cat, probability of cat given dog, and we did 10% divided by 35, and we got 0.286. Okay. And then we understand where we got from this, right? So all I'm doing is I'm just applying this equation, which says if they're independent, this thing is going to hold true. Okay? And I just replaced wherever I saw A with the word cat, and I replaced whenever I saw B with the word dog. And so now I have cat given dog equals probability of cat. Is this true? Is this true? If this holds true, they're independent. If it doesn't hold true, then they're not independent. Mm -hmm. And so I checked. It doesn't hold true, so they're not independent. Okay? This equation does not hold true. So here I'm saying uh, we have men and we have women, a lot more women than we have men, okay? And then we have left-handed people and right-handed people. And I'm just asking, uh, is uh, being left-handed independent of being gender, okay? So being a male, man or woman. We'll just say, uh, is it independent of being a uh, woman? So how can I check this? Ways we can check this. One is, what's the probability 
of being a woman if someone is left-handed. And we would compare this against what? And we'll say, is this equal to the probability of just being a woman? Or, or selecting a woman, I should say. Okay. Um, and that's all I'm doing is I'm just replacing the letter A with one of the words or categories and the letter B with the other one. Okay. So if I want to know, is being left-handed independent of being a woman? Okay, I just say, okay, well, we're going to say A is woman. So I'm going to put that here and here, and I'm going to say B is left, okay? I could also, equally, I could check what? Yeah, man or woman, but in this case, we'll just stick with the, uh, the theme of woman. And is this equal? I would check this to see if it's equal to what? Probability of being left-handed. Exactly, okay? So this, I can check, okay? I, I am not allowed to check if this equals this, or if this equals this, or if this equals that, okay? I can't get these mixed up. I have to rely on this type of thing and see, you know, because remember, what does an independent mean? It means one event does not influence the other. So, if I know someone is a woman, does that change the probability that she's left-handed, okay? Okay, or I'm, um, yeah. So if I say, you know, what's the probability that I pick someone at random and this person is left-handed? You can give me an answer. And I'm going to say, okay, hang on a second. I'm going to give you another piece of information. This person is a woman. Does that help your case in figuring out the probability of someone being left-handed? No. Okay. But if I tell you, um, oh, let me give you a piece of information. Um, you know, the butter's on the uh, the right-hand side of the fork, uh, of the knife. Then you'd say, oh probably left-handed, okay? Um, well, anyway. Uh, okay, so what is probability of woman given left? being a woman, or selecting a woman? Nine. Nine, yeah, one, one. Nine, yeah, one, one. So I have 0.75 here, and I've got 0.75 here, so there's a match. What does that mean? That means they are independent, okay? So this thing does hold true. <laughs> Probability of woman given left does equal probability of being woman. So uh, gender and handedness are independent. Okay. There is, um, and for now we're just going to say check the things this way. And if they're exactly equal, they're independent. If they're not exactly equal, they're not independent. We're going to just leave it at, at now, for that for now, okay? The truth is, is, um, um, you know, let's say I, I selected uh, 91 people, or 91 women, and that, that last one uh, was left-handed. Well, if you check the map here, they won't be equal, okay? Because you're going to do 91 divided by 121 and 13 over 17. 
and they're going to be off by a little bit. And then in that case, you would say they are not independent. Okay. And that that something feels a little unsettling about that, right? You're just like, oh, I just happened to get one more woman, and she happened to be left-handed. How is this not no longer independent? Okay. Well, um, we're going to apply statistics, some uh, rules of statistics, and we will be able to test to see if um, if there's evidence that they are not independent. Okay. And we will and we'll come to the conclusion that. That 13 out of 17 is within the quote range of tolerance where we can still say we would say that there's no evidence that it's not independent. Okay. It doesn't prove that they're independent, but it would say this is not enough information to say that they are not independent. Okay, but for now, if they're not exactly equal, we're just going to say not independent. Okay, is, is that okay? Check Check some out. If we have multiple events, okay, multiple independent events, so I might go just a little bit past 10 o'clock, and I'm sorry about that. All right. So multiple independent events. How can we um, find the probabilities? Okay. So if, if uh, let's say, uh, what's the probability? Um, getting heads uh, when you flip a coin once. 50%, right? 0.50. Okay. Let's say I flip the coin three times. Okay. What's the probability that I get heads all three times? The second coin flip, I have to see heads. And the third coin flip, I have to see heads. Okay, what's the probability that I'm going to see heads the first time? 50%. Okay. And the coin flips are independent, right? So right. probability of getting heads time, uh, and getting heads again, I'm just going to multiply. Right. Because we know that when they're independent, A and B is the probability of A times the probability of B. Okay, and so this applies we can ex to three events happening together or whatever. So heads, 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 this is going to be 0.125. Okay. What's the probability that I see no heads at all? Because no heads at all means I see what? Tails, tails, tails. Which is the probability of tails is 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.125. Okay. I flip a coin three times. What's the probability that I see the sequence? Um, heads, tails, heads. 0.125, good. Okay. What's the probability I see exactly? What, so, I mean, did I do this too quickly? Is this okay? No. Anybody have questions on this one? I know. Yeah, it's going to be 0.5 times 0.5 times 0.5, also 0.125, okay? What if I said a probability that I see exactly? 
one tail. So this one's a little bit weird, okay? This one's tough because there's three possible things that could happen. I can see heads, heads, tails. I could see heads, tails, heads. What else can I see? Tails, heads, heads. There are three possible ways to see exactly one tail. So what is this? What's the probability of heads, heads, tails? 0.5 times 0.5 times 0.5. So this is 0.125. What's the probability of this one? Same thing, also 0.125. And the probability of seeing this, also 0.125. So the total probability of seeing exactly one tail is, Jonathan, so I add these three up. Okay, why am I adding these? because they're independent. It's because they're mutually exclusive of one another. Okay? Mutually exclusive. So mutually exclusive means I cannot, if I flip a coin three times, I cannot see heads, heads, tails, and at the same time see <coughs> tails, heads, heads, or at the same time see heads, tails, heads. Okay? One of those things has to happen. I can't see any, there's no overlap of those when I flip a coin three times. Okay, so they're mutually exclusive. Because technically, seeing exactly one tail is what's the probability of seeing this, or seeing this, or seeing this. And whenever I have ors, I add them together, but I have to subtract any overlap. But is there any overlap between this and this? No, because those events cannot happen together. So here's a question. Are mutually independent events, I'm sorry, I got the wrong question, okay. Are mutually exclusive events independent? Yes, no, maybe. If you know two events are mutually exclusive, can they also be independent? Yes, no, maybe. You said all independent events are mutually exclusive. I don't think I ever said that. I should not have said that. No, I forgot what. This is this, but this is not always this. Okay, I'm not sure. What I don't know you, what you're, it's you're saying. Okay. Talking about compliments. Oh compliments. yeah. Okay. Compliments, compliments. Okay. So, so are um, mutually exclusive, mutually exclusive events. If you know two things are mutually exclusive, you know for sure they are not independent. Are uh, if so if, if events are mutually exclusive, they are not. Independent. And if two events are independent, they are not mutually exclusive. to be independent, it means the outcome of one has no influence on the outcome of the other. Okay. If two events are mutually exclusive, if one event happens, what's the probability that the other event happens? So if two events are mutually exclusive, it means when one event happens, the other event never happens. It's zero. Zero, mutually exclusive, right? So if I tell you, I, so two events that are mutually exclusive is drawing a red card and drawing a spade. If I draw a red card, you know it cannot at the same time be a spade. If I tell you a person is in the 18 to 24 category, you know they cannot also at the same time be in the 40 plus category. So once you know one event has happened, it makes the other event impossible. Whereas independent events, even if you know one thing has happened, it has no influence on the other event. Okay, 
So the last thing, and then I'll let you guys go. All right? All right, we'll just do a couple examples. I don't know. Ah, I want to I wanna make sure I'm giving you enough, enough to do uh, your homework and do well on the quiz next week. So that's, that's like, um, I don't want to just leave you hanging here. Um, what if I said, what's the probability of seeing uh, you flip a coin three times. What's the probability of seeing at least one head? Seeing at least one head. So what does it mean to see at least one? It means seeing, I did see one head, two heads, or three heads, right? What's also possible? Okay, well, whenever you flip a coin three times, it's also possible to get zero heads, okay? So flipping a coin three times will result in one of these four outcomes, okay? Is that, is that correct? <laughs> At least one, this satisfies, this satisfies, and this satisfies, okay? So if I said at least one head includes those events, what is the complement of all of those events? One. Yeah, one minus all of those, or none, okay? So at least one is the complement of seeing none. Okay, and this, this is actually true for everything in life. Seeing at least one is the complement of seeing none. So what's the probability of seeing at least one head? This is going to be equal. What is the complement? One minus the probability of seeing no heads. What's the probability of seeing no heads? Zero. Zero. One divided by seven. Point one two five. Right. Seeing no heads means you saw tails, tails, tails. So this is going to be one minus point five times point five times point five. So that's one minus point one two five point eight seven five. So study this, all right? You will see some examples like this on the quiz next week, okay? So and you gotta know that at least one is the complement of none and things like this, okay? All right, uh, good luck in your homework and, uh, and we'll see you guys next week uh, for the quiz.